welcome to Development Dynamics. I'm your host, Maxi. This is an absolutely fantastic season that you are starting. Um, we are in 2023. We've had a few episodes running, and now we are glad and delighted to continue. Uh, at DD with Maxi at Development Dynamics, we uh, provide a platform for conversation, a platform for uh, for reflection and also storytelling where we invite and host leaders and practitioners who have had a great impact, especially in the social and development spheres. Often we know that uh, serialization has been done for politicians, for businessmen, for artists, but people whose journey is primarily in development at times go unsung. Um, and one of those whose story is remarkable, ladies and gentlemen, is Nyakera Irongo, and that's who we have today. His biography is rich, but what we will do is that we'll go through his entire life to where he is right now, and um, we will be sussing out nuances about his own journey, his moments, his, and, and, and who he is, and how he's also found meaning in life. Nyakera, welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi. Asante sana. Thank you for joining us, for creating this time just to be here and for honoring our invitation. We are, we are super delighted. We like to begin by um, going before birth. Yeah. <laughs> what, where does Nyakera, what are your roots? Yeah. Where, where does Nyakera the man come from? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Maxi. Uh, the, so I'm from Moranga County. Yeah. Uh, my mom was a, a single uh, mother mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I was uh, born in Moranga mm -hmm. and, and, and raised. Particularly? Uh, uh, in Madioya. 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 In a place called uh, Kiru, Kiru. Uh, Ward. Oh, uh, nice. Kamagoko village. Yes. So <laughs> that's, where we, that's where the roots yeah. uh, are. Right. And uh, I would say uh, from, uh, from there, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't stay there for too long mm -hmm. uh, because uh, my mom was a, a very entrepreneur uh -huh. and she was looking right. for opportunities yeah. beyond that could not be offered in the village. Yes. So we very quickly uh, moved to Nairobi. Are you a single child? Are you from? Um... No, we mm -hmm. had three. Uh -huh. We had three. Um, the first one. Right. So by the time uh, that time, I was the only one. Yeah. Uh, so we moved to Nairobi around uh, 1986, mm -hmm. uh, 85, 86, mm -hmm. and then uh, in a place called Kenyago, uh, the 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 slums of Eastlands. Kenyago. Yeah. Kenyago. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Pale Biafra. Yes. Yes. Biafra. Uh, uh, somewhere near Buruburu? Uh, yes. Yes. Near Buruburu. From B Kenyago, you go to Jericho. Yes. And Buruburu. Okay. Is okay. On the other side, yeah. So that's where you spent majority of your of your childhood? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all the way to when I joined uh, class one. Yeah. Then, uh, I, which I joined at Starehe Boys. Right. So which was not far from there, from we, Kenyago. You're very early childhood. What, what do you... What do you recollect? What are your fondest memory of that period, even before you joined school? I, a lot, because you see, the, in that uh, setting, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much there the is life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, with all these other kids growing yeah. up, there yeah. is uh, it's just a free spirits. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, we didn't even know that we were poor. <laughs> it's just, it just because the everyone beauty, around you yeah, was the innocence the same. of children, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, so so we just came, we just enjoyed the mm. childhood. I would mm. say that it was quite uh, enjoyable then. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, the, the, I remember once, at least to understand how the, the area, the issues of insecurity, mm. I remember because we were living in a, a one of these mud houses. Mm -hmm. uh, we wake up in the morning, and uh, we are sleeping on the floor. There is no bed. There is wow. <laughs> there is not that charahani the yeah, one aye, that was, uh, sort of, there is a big hole on the wall. Oh, so goodness. some guys came, sprayed us, and then carried everything in the house wow. at night. Wow. Although there wasn't a lot to be carried, but, <laughs> <laughs> but still, <laughs> whatever little that was there, you woke up to an empty house. Woke up to an empty <laughs> house. You had to go to the neighbor to borrow furias oh, and uh, try to make some breakfast. You'd all been sprayed. Yes. Yes, so nobody Goodness. had 
anything. We just woke up. It was me, my mom, and my sister. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh. so that, that that was the the, the oh, life oh, 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 uh, okay. back then. All right. Uh, Kenyago. So, uh, but, yeah, Kenyago. Kenyago. But yeah. you got an opportunity to join um, Starhead Boys. Yes. For your primary school. For primary school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Starhead, and in particular for primary, uh, was uh, for. Uh, very poor uh, people from very poor backgrounds, mm. and mostly orphans, people from the children's home. Mm. Uh, so my mom somehow managed, mm. being a streetwise mm. uh, person, managed to connect with someone from Starehe. Mm -hmm. uh, they called us for an interview. I was mm. interviewed. Mm -hmm. I think I passed, mm. uh, but I think I still wrote an E. Mm. Like a three. That one I have never forgot. <laughs> the reverse. <laughs> the reverse. Did you have to? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you had to touch yeah, the, the ear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then from there, now the next thing was now Starehe. They were sending uh, people to come and inspect. Okay. Uh, you, you, uh, to establish that you're actually poor. Yeah, yeah, that you are rightfully here. You, are, you should be there. Yeah. And because that time you've not been admitted mm. yet. You've just done the test, you've mm. passed. Mm. So on the day that they were sending people, I remember my mom waking us up at around uh, four in the morning mm -hmm. yeah, to carry things and take them to the neighbor. The little things that were there. <laughs> just to establish. <laughs> just so that by the time these people come, yeah. the house is at 70 years the day <laughs> when you were robbed. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 yeah, so they came and, yeah, they, again, there's not too much that we are carrying. Mm, mm. <laughs> but you see, they, you still have to ensure that uh, she did not want to take any chances right. yeah so right. from there I was uh, admitted uh unfortunately and it's uh, about two years later she passed on mm. about two years later from sickness yeah uh, no from an accident oh yeah she had an accident mm. and, uh, she passed on how did that impact on you and your siblings no oh, my sister was one month old mm. one of you know the the youngest mm -mm. uh for me i was seven mm. yeah Mm. Uh, the other sister was three years so so essentially what we had to do is just move back to Moranga. yeah so our city life had to end there come yeah. to an end, <laughs> come at, to an end. at that point what did that mean for school uh, for me it didn't mean uh, much because i still was body, I, I was body. Mm. so i still now it's just that i would yeah. uh commute between yeah. between uh, Moranga Moranga. and, uh, and uh, nairobi during midterms and uh, holiday season. Holidays. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh dear. Um, and this is happening when you are seven only. Yes, I was. Uh, I was eight. Eight. Uh, so I was in standard two. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. How was school? Uh, for for me, uh, we you know the beauty with the uh, A lot, all of us, most of us, ninety percent were from that poor background. Mm -hmm. uh, other than a few who are the kids from the teachers. Mm and other stuff but so everyone was uh, we we had the same <laughs> background <DNA>. yeah <laughs> we are all from poor background so there's no one who there's no culture shock. brag yeah <laughs> about them owning so much or, or flying so, to dubai or, during or the holidays to dubai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah some people actually had to stay in school during holidays because oh, they had no place to go. to go yeah wow so so it was uh, school generally for me uh, uh, was was okay at mm. that point and uh, I always aspired to uh, be a doctor mm. so from a very early age I, I knew that I'd have to put in mm. the efforts and, and th the level of discipline and acad academic pursuit in for Starehe such boys were known to be super sharp mm. and um, I assume that you know you're in there was a lot of instilling of uh, hard, hard work, discipline. Uh, absolutely. Mm. Uh, you see, for for primary, mm -hmm. we were living in the glory of the secondary. Yeah. Uh, the primary was very indisciplined. Oh. <laughs> we, we did not have. We were not doing well academically. Oh. But you see, now the secondary is where now we are all saying we start. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, because you see, now by the time you pay, take the kids yeah. who are very young, mm. you cannot really tell, be able to get the smartest from everywhere That's true. Yeah. and yeah. again the criteria for picking for star primary was different than star secondary there are, there are uh, so with that then there are a lot of people who were in star primary but didn't qualify to be in high actually school. The, out of a class of we used to be about 36 uh only about three or four used oh. to join 
Starai Second. Interesting. The others used to go to other schools or no, mm. uh, not go to mm. school at all. Yeah, mm. Mm. because they see the criteria for Starai Secondary was poor but mm. uh, sharp. Mm. Starai Secondary Primary was just poor. Yeah, <laughs> that was the only criteria. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you say you wanted to be a doctor, so yes. you were interested a lot in the sciences in during sciences, school. Sciences, the math. Mm. Uh, so, so all, all the way through uh, primary, mm. uh, uh, did my KCP and I was admitted to uh, Starehe Secondary. You're one of the three. Uh, I was one of the, <laughs> that, our year we were four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So one of the four nice. in our year. Yeah. Uh, then I went into secondary and now there mm. where we realized, okay, now what we've Life been is doing, we've been joking. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now there are all these sharp from kids across from the country. across the country. Yeah. Yeah. I remember because we were never really uh, uh, integrated in, in many ways with a lot of people, so we didn't understand uh, how things, what is an insult, what is not. I remember <laughs> there's a guy who had come from uh, uh, Masabit, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Abdul. Uh, and uh, when I was there, I was the one introduced, I was told to take him around because mm. I already knew the school. Mm. And so when I, I, I said hi to him, I said, Semangamia. <laughs> <laughs> and he started fighting <laughs> just outside the He took nerves. offense. <laughs> he, took, <laughs> he took serious offense. For me, I didn't even think it was an insult. Yeah. So, oh. so, so it, was, uh, it was interesting just learning mm. uh, now how to uh, work mm. with, with other people, the diversity, mm. appreciating mm. the differences and yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was quite interesting. Interesting. And your memories from high school, other than that one, in terms of like um, other co-curricular, um, are you at this stage interested in, now you're an adolescent in, in, yeah. at Starehe High yeah. School, what are your, what are the things that you're doing other than sciences and math and, and um, yeah. I, I, was, I was very outgoing actually, I think I was, I had the most extracurricular mm. number of uh, clubs, mm. uh, the hiking, mm. the, the uh, president's award, mm. the scouts mm. uh, movement. Oh, the full. Uh, the, the, yeah, everything. Mm. I was a leader in uh, those young farmers. Yeah. Uh, the, we had one called Survival Club, mm. uh, which was now for camps and hikes, which I was also the leader. Mm. Uh, the, so a lot, then I was also in, uh, uh, initially a prefect, then a captain right. uh, in the school. And the, the prefectorial system in Starehe was very different and unique mm -hmm. uh, because what it did is it put all the powers mm. in the prefects, mm. uh, no powers in the teachers. So, oh. so the, actually if a teacher wanted to uh, instill discipline or punish someone, they'll submit the names to the to captain, the prefect. Yeah, oh, to, wow. to the prefect so you, for, wow. for them to discipline that person. Mm. Yeah. So, so the, the, we had a cabinet, mm. you know, which is a captain's which used to meet mm. uh, on, a, on a weekly basis. Uh, what do you attribute that very deep system to? Is it the, is it Gr Dr. the founder, Griffin? yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Uh, Griffin, Griffin wanted to, to really empower the students and ensure that, uh, give them the responsibility, mm. uh, which is even in terms of the extracurricular and the club systems. Mm. Uh, we had a lot of those clubs, wildlife, Rotaract, all of them, and mm. all of them, the different leaders mm. are the ones who are responsible for everything. Mm. And they were given their space mm. to actually perform that. Mm. Uh, by having the student leaders, mm -hmm. uh, there is a system that uh, there was a very uh, good check uh, for that mm -hmm. because then you give the prefects a lot of power mm. but then every friday we used to have what we call the baraza okay the baraza is uh the prefects the captains and coming all together. the students mm. coming together mm -hmm. yeah uh during that period of about an hour mm. an hour and a half mm -hmm. the students can now ask any questions wow. yeah they can come and call on any prefect mm. any captain who mm. punished them mm. uh, and uh, if it was unfair mm. they come and pose it there mm. and the captain has to come and answer and explain to the whole school mm. why he did it that way and then mm. Griffin will be the one to pass the final judgment mm. on whether it was fair or not. Mm. If it was unfair, the captain has to apologize. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of leadership is, is servant leadership, yes. democracy. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. At that point, mm. yeah. 
Mm. So, so that, that that was one thing that I really took from 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 high school and mm. from uh, from Griffin. Mm. Uh, then we had uh, something else that uh, used to be called career talks, right? Which was because you see, as a young person, me for me, I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you ask me why I want to be a doctor, I really didn't. It just I felt that I would be able to serve mm. uh, better and serve the uh, the people in a, in a, in that capacity of mm. a doctor. Mm. Um, so we had, but a lot of people didn't know what they'd want, mm. and and it's the same case across mm. across uh, the country and the globally mm. for people of that age. Right. So what Griffin had is uh, for all the form fours every Thursday, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, between three and four o'clock. Mm. Hey, you you come to the assembly hall and he speaks to you about all those things. Mm. Uh, and career talk was about your career, about mm. life skills, about mm. life goals, about life and living mm. generally. Mm. Yeah, and I found that to be uh, very powerful because then uh, up to to date, I still remember a lot from that, that we learned from there about mm. drug use, mm. uh, about. Uh, uh, marriages, mm. about relationships, mm. about uh, your your employment, mm. how to ensure uh, how to we had something called stickability, mm. how to stick in your career and mm. your job and mm. so there was a lot mm. of those uh, solid life skills. solid foundation. Yes, mm. very solid foundation, mm. and I think it's something that I do. We've been doing even with my foundation, Irungu mm. Jankera uh, Foundation. Mm. We, we had started doing those uh, kind of mm. career talks mm. in uh, public, uh, mm. uh, uh, schools. Uh, public schools, mm. public mm. high schools, mm. uh, both for the teachers, the parents, as well as the students. Mm. Interesting how that you know connects with, as you're saying, what you've been able to do. Uh, more recently, and we'll, we'll we'll just keep with the story. So, did you? But you complete your high school from there. Were you doing Form 4 or Form 6? We did. Uh, so after Form 4, we mm -hmm. had another one year, which was Form 5, mm -hmm. uh, in the Technical Institute, right. uh, where I was doing uh, accounting and computers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and at the same time, because you're still in the school, I was still a captain mm. uh, uh, in, in, in the school. And the Technical Institute was still? Still under Starehe. Mm -hmm. Star so Starehe had gone up to Form 6, so right. such that you'd finish and join university because yeah. then campus you used to stay about for a year and a half yeah. outside. Oh, okay. mm. So the, that's how the uh, the technical institute the was created is... for that gap year. Mm. Yeah, to, mm. to, to ensure that you don't have, you're not just out there. So literally all your education? I was there for 13 years. Wow. Yeah, in, the, in <laughs> one institution yeah. Yeah, for 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. You, you are totally, you, you are the one with the most blood. Yes, from yes, our so blood is the uh, runs Yeah. Uh, and, and because it's the formative years, mm. uh, it's actually the, the years that you remember uh, the most. Very fondly. Uh, yeah. And fondly because mm. we, you are not also not adulting. Mm. So you see now, <laughs> adulting is difficult. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that. did you get a, um, a culture shock when you left, when you left the technical institute into a different place where you are you are it's freer it's different yeah no for for me because after technical mm -hmm. uh, we i finished uh from right. that from five mm -hmm. uh and then i went uh into uh went uh, straight to nyahururu uh where i got a job as a teacher okay uh, in nyahururu light school yeah and uh and there I was teaching physics and computers mm. uh, to high school and primary. Mm. Uh, physics in high school and computers in primary. Mm. And uh, because I was not being paid much, mm -hmm. I was looking for ways to, to supplement my income. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so in the evening, there's a place where I used to fix uh, the phones. I had learned how to fix phones. Mm. Uh, on weekends, on Friday evening, I would come to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my cousin, uh, cousins were living in Nairobi mm -hmm. and so on Saturday and Sunday I used to be a Makanga. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I, I make a bit more money yeah. Yeah, from that. Yeah. Which route are you playing? Kayole. Kayole. <laughs> Kayole. Kayole route to more. 33, Inako, 60. Uh, 1960. 1960. 1960, yes. 1960 <laughs> yeah. So all the way in Bakapale, uh, yeah. Kayole Hospital. Right. And so I had to know. Chapatan. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, you've done it all. <laughs> yeah. 
so true hustler mentality. <laughs> true hustler. Yeah. We hustled uh, through uh, end of the week mm. on Sunday. Mm. Uh, do some uh, get a few things here. Back, back to, to Nyahururu. Nyahururu. Monday morning, I'm in class. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you call the school Nyahururu? <laughs> Nyahururu Elite School. Like elite, elite, elite schools. Elite schools yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Is it still on? Still there. You had there. a chance to go back and I uh, no, I've never gone back mm. uh, to the school, but mm. I know the owner is the former governor of Nyandaro. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I've interacted with him even, uh, recently. Yeah, right. And uh, Mr. Waidaka. Yes. So, so I think we remember fondly the memories of the school. Of the school. Uh, of course, other than them underpaying me. <laughs> <laughs> he, should, he, should, he should catch up now. He yeah. should. <laughs> yeah, he should at least send me some. Hopefully, he can watch and send me some impressions. Right. For the right. Yeah. Um, and so, this is your first job as a teacher? Yes. Your first formal job? Yes. Um, and and um, how long did you serve them? I was there for about six months. Mm -hmm. uh, I, now from there is when uh, when I'm there, I was called in by uh, Griffin uh, because I, I was admitted to Nairobi University to mm -hmm. uh, pursue medicine. Mm -hmm. um, so just as I had always desired. Uh, desired. Yeah. yeah. So, Are these dreams that you had shared with him? Uh, uh, Griffin. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. he knew. He knew actually. Mm. He, he had encouraged me to uh, apply for med. Anyway, for for us, what he he insisted for anyone who's in the what they call the top forty, mm. uh, he insisted that you have to to go to either med med school mm. or engineering or right. law. Yeah. yeah. And if you're in top twenty, he yeah. was insisting that it has to be medicine. Medicine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he always encouraged mm. us uh, mm. to 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 do medicine. Mm. Uh, actually, our year, I remember out of a class of uh, 150 for both uh, Narob University and Moi, mm. 32 are from, from Starehe. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's wow. That's where you find a lot of Starehians mm. are mm. doctors. As doctors, yeah, as doctors. Across now, yeah. 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 Senior doctors now. Senior right. doctors yeah. now, mm. uh, oh, of course. Mm. So for me, I was uh, joining uh, uh, Chiromo, mm -hmm. but then uh, Griffin uh, called me and told me that there is an opportunity for a gap year. Mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. All and right. that uh, the school was one of the round square schools, mm -hmm. a group of schools, which mm -hmm. is a global uh, grouping of schools that have a similar uh, mm. uh, the, the uh, ethos. Mm. And uh, so he asked that I go represent the Right. Yeah. Uh, more initially as uh, training them on leadership and student leadership. They love the Starehe model. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's how I uh, was just starting my med school and then I was, I was, I was, you are plugged I out. was plugged out. Yeah. Uh, and so I deferred my, my med, med school with, uh, with JAB, yeah. uh, Joint Admission Board back then, mm -hmm. and uh, went on to Deerfield Academy yeah. in Massachusetts. Did you ever come back to med school? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Other uh, things happened when you Other went things to... happened, but I was very passionate about it. Mm. I tried to explain to, because when I started at Deerfield, I they told me that I need to start taking classes, mm -hmm. uh, more of a postgraduate diploma. Okay. Um, and uh, and then at that point, uh, they, I got a college uh, counselor, mm -hmm. a lady called by, by the name Miss Lyman, mm -hmm. and she told me, I told her I have to come back to Kenya. Mm -hmm. I have to pursue my medicine. Mm -hmm. So she told me it won't hurt. Mm -hmm. I just applied to the American universities. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I get in, I'll now have options. Mm. I'll decide mm. whether to come back mm. and pursue my medicine or, or just to stay there. To stay there. Mm. Uh, so I decided to do that. Mm. Uh, she got me waivers for all the fees because a Deerfield was full scholarship. Right. They paid for, for me mm. and everything. Mm. Uh, and uh, so I was, I applied, I remember I applied to 18 universities. Uh, universities. Yeah. And what you're applying specifically for medicine? No. No, you know, in the General. U.S., it's it's it was medicine. It's not a first degree. Mm. Uh, you apply for mm. something different. Mm. But uh, I, at the same time, I realized that medicine, uh, not being a first degree, mm. if you take, uh, if you pursue that line, and you don't get funds to to pursue it <laughs> as now as a second degree, yeah. the must, mm. then you'll never be a doctor. Right. So I didn't want right. to take that risk. Okay. So I didn't mm. have 
didn't know where I would get mm. that kind of money. I mm. knew I can get a scholarship yeah. for undergraduate, but yeah. I didn't know about the scholarship for graduates. Wow. So yeah. you applied to 18 So I applied to 18. Mm. I remember I was accepted to 14. Mm. Uh, six of which gave me a full scholarship. Oh, wow. Uh, Your so, options were vast. So my options were very vast. Mm. Uh, six were Ivy Leagues. Oh, wow. So, and key, key I think the, the Stanford, mm. uh, Harvard, mm. uh, Brown, mm. Uh, uh, Yale, mm. Williams, and Whitman. Mm -hmm. Those are the six that mm -hmm. gave that me accepted full, you scholarship. full scholarship. Yes, that, that's the you know that's the cream of the uh, uh, the, the top of the cream fully. It's, yes, fully. Yeah. So I I narrowed down to Harvard and Stanford. Mm -hmm. So I called Griffin, mm -hmm. and I told him I have now I have three options. Mm. And one is coming back to Rob University to yeah. and doing my medicine, mm -hmm. uh, going to uh, Harvard or going to Stanford. Stanford yeah. So he thought and then he laughed and then he said, uh, you have what I would call a golden problem. That is a golden I problem. I know you will find a solution. Oh, and yeah. that's it. He did not he, even make any suggestions mm, or mm, anything. Mm. He, just, he just left it at mm. that and told me good mm. luck. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's when I uh, went, visited Harvard, mm. uh, then visited Stanford, mm. and then I decided to uh, pursue uh, my degree at Stanford. At Stanford, yeah. All right. What was your degree? And in, my, it was in engineering, mm -hmm. uh, uh, industrial engineering, mm. with a focus on uh, finance and decision engineering. Mm. Yes. And how long at Stanford did that take you? Four years. Oh, wow. So yeah. the full... The, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Life Full there. Full scholarship, yes. Yes, in California. So you're a village boy from Muranga who's gotten lucky to go through uh, Starehe Boys for 13 years, return to Nyahururu. <laughs> now you're in the U.S. What, how, is, how is all of that impacting you as a young man at the time? The U.S. living, um, yeah. I, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it was certainly, uh, you see, Leo, when you go to Stanford, Stanford, uh, the population of the black population, uh, the students' yeah. population was about 5%. Yeah. Uh, the others were uh, then a, another big percentage from the Chinese, mm. uh, the Latinos, mm. then the majority, of course, was the uh, American, American white. Uh, white. Mm. Uh, so, of course, living in that environment is also different. Mm. You know, in Kenya, you're just used to, mm. everywhere you look, everyone looks like you. Everyone yeah. is Nobody's judging you, no, yeah. nobody's doubting you, mm. uh, even your teachers. So so there's, there's a lot that we take for granted, mm. uh, living in an environment that is quite homogeneous. Mm. Now, when you're there, now now you have to start thinking about how do you deal with all those? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, they, they, that, that's the, the, it actually forms a very big part of uh, your, your, your existence there. Mm. Um, but also, uh, my, my focus was also on the on post-university, what mm -hmm. do I want? Uh, mm. What career mm. do I build? Mm. Uh, where do I uh, head. Uh, head to? Mm. Where, uh, and so I really um, I focused a lot on, 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 on my, my uh, schooling, mm. uh, but also did a lot of extracurricular. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, again, I was the president of quite a number of clubs. Mm. I was a freshman president mm. when we started off. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, quite a number of clubs, mm. uh, which I was the the hiking and uh, club of the university is mm. called uh, uh, it's called uh, Re Re uh, Redwood and all those mm. things. Uh, mm. uh, from there, I said even these people need to know more about us. Mm. Uh, I started a student magazine mm -hmm. uh, called Saudi. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, which is now the Stanford uh, Student Magazine. Mm. Uh, we I started the mm -hmm. uh, and ensure that it uses the name Saudi. Saudi, mm. it was called Saudi. I Saudi. think it is still there yeah. up to date. Yeah. Funded by the university, mm. uh, created it was uh, started it as an organization, mm. uh, student organization mm. in, in, in the school. Mm. Uh, then from there we I also started uh, Stanford Africa Business Forum. Mm. Uh, I attended the the Wharton and the Harvard mm. business forums uh, and realized that on the uh, west uh, side of the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the US, US mm. the, we didn't have any, any such, such yeah. uh, meeting of business minds from Africa mm. yeah, uh, to come engage with 
uh, with the students. potential investors, mm. students, and mm. all that. Mm. So I also founded mm. the Stanford Africa Business Forum. Mm. I think it's now in its 15th year. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Uh, actually, I, uh, I put my own money. Yeah, because you Initially. cannot get yeah. enough money mm. from the university. Mm. So actually, I put my own money mm. uh, with the hopes that the tickets we sell mm. will will be enough so that to I can return. put my money yeah. back. And, yeah. <laughs> and we raised enough money. Oh, yeah, it nice. was, you uh, broke uh, even? and Broke even. Made yeah. pr ma ma making profit? No, the profit now, I put it back, back. into mm. now in preparation for the for next year. For the next year. years. Uh, next that's years. really, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah. You are just a young man at you, in your early 20s yes, at this time. Yes, in your early 20s, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you having any, like, are you having gigs? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. I was working uh, because my scholarship was a full scholarship, mm. uh, but also uh, because we were allowed work hours. Yeah. Uh, we had a job where I got, uh, grew to be a manager in the what we used to call the Stanford Center for Professional Development. All these people who do online classes. Yeah. So it's a work study program. Y yes, yes. Within the institution. Within the, yeah, okay. Yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah. And you'd make. You'd make enough extra bucks to yes. cater for whatever other life you want to and do. And send money back to And send to money Morana. back. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. To your sister, to, to, yeah, your, your sister. sisters and your and grandmother. My grandmother, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Did either of them follow follow you? Uh, no. Mm. They they didn't. My sisters are still uh, here. Mm. Uh, but I guess also I didn't stay there for long enough to start. True, <laughs> true. Because when I finished mm -hmm. uh, university, mm. I immediately got a job. Mm. Uh, uh, investment banking mm -hmm. uh, in Manhattan mm. uh, where we started out then I moved to London uh, Canary Wharf mm. so from there uh, when I looked at I was given the option of going back to New York or mm. staying in London mm. I felt I felt more at home in London oh yeah so I, you move I, I, I stuck there in Europe in, uh -huh. yeah mm. uh, I found it more cosmopolitan mm. it was closer to home it's mm. eight hours away mm. I was coming here on a monthly basis. Mm. I was in charge of Africa. Mm. Uh, so I was crisscrossing the African countries and mm. looking for opportunities mm. uh, for, for the bank. What did, they, what, what did the banks need to check from you to give you the job, given that here you are largely studying engineering? The investment banking, actually, mm -hmm. they were taking, you see, it, it's not specific to a certain degree. Mm. It's more about the passion and mm. uh, that someone is actually mm. uh, 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 smart enough to actually mm. carry out the, 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 the job, mm. uh, the JD. Mm -hmm. so, so for them, uh, the, I remember for the job that I got, mm. there were 13,000 13, applications for five positions. Yeah. What? <laughs> because investment banking was very high. That time mm. it was to be really highly rated, mm. Mm. Uh, especially with the top mm. uh, three uh, investment banks. In the, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even for them, they were getting students, uh, the, the student, the uh, employees, analysts, mm. mostly from the Ivy Leagues. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You, so you, how long did you spend in, uh, in, in London? London, I was there for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Uh, almost two years actually. Yeah, but uh, doing a lot of uh, regular visits across. Yes, yeah, I was here Africa. in Africa mm. at least once a month. Mm. In and establishing yes. your roots back here yes. in, in the country, in particularly. Kenya. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. I was always coming yeah. um, uh, for work. Yeah. Then when I go if it's in South Africa, I make a stop back here for yeah. two days, then I head back to, mm. to London. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And how did that, what, what happened next? What after the two year period? Well, what happened is mm -hmm. actually um, I had built very good relationships mm -hmm. uh, here mm. uh, because what I was doing is every time I was coming, I was seeking out to oh, if it's the CEO of Equity Bank, mm. uh, James Mwangi, mm. CEO of Britam, mm. uh, Benson Oiregi, CEO of things like Shelter Africa, mm. Coconcita, mm. uh, INM Bank, all of them. Mm. I used to come. Mm. and meet them mm. and take them through the uh, a report mm. on banking. I always right. used to come with mm. an updated report mm. on banking mm. for Africa. And so I show them this is where your company is, this is how you progressed, mm. uh, this the dynamics, this is mm. what the market looks like, so our projections. Mm -hmm. So they always looked forward mm. uh, to, to, to you, me you coming, coming back. back every, Did any start offering, uh, uh, making offers to you? Actually, when, uh, you know, 
in 20, 2008, we'd had the global economic uh, crisis. Okay. Mm. Uh, so that's when we were made redundant. Actually, mm. the, the Citigroup had about 500,000 employees. Wow. It made about uh, 300,000 redundant. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was huge. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, the, remember the first cut was 75,000, another 75,000, mm. another 100,000. Wow. And so across mm. the globe. Mm. Uh, so when we were made redundant, uh, I just uh, we were given about six months uh, or more. Mm. Uh, so I just came back uh, home for about a week. Mm. Uh, I, took, I got some offers in London. I said, mm. I don't feel like, because at that time I had already applied mm. to do my master's and I'd been accepted to MIT uh -huh. yeah, to mm. go do my master's at Sloan. Mm. Actually, it was a... I got into Harvard MIT program, which was a MP, uh, MPP, Masters in Public Policy mm -hmm. at Kennedy School and mm. MBA at Sloan. Mm. Uh, you did both? I was to do both. You had to do yeah, both. I had mm. to be being admitted for both. Mm. So it was a three year program. Mm. So I, I didn't want uh, the job that yeah. I was being offered in London. Mm. I felt, let me just come back mm -hmm. home. So when I came, within the five days uh, I was here, I, I left with about five. Uh, offers. Job offers. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I got uh, from Britam, from INM, from uh, NIC Bank, from, I think there were five in total. Mm. Uh, but the most interesting one was at Equity. Mm. Uh, because when I called James and I told him, uh, Dr. Mwangi, mm. that I'm coming, mm. uh, he told me uh, there's an opportunity, mm -hmm. and, uh, actually. Mm. So I come talk to him. Mm. So I came to his office, and then uh, as I'm waiting, he told me to wait uh, there. Mm -hmm. Then as I'm waiting, uh, I was called, and I was told, everyone is ready for you uh, at the boardroom. So I asked them, who's everyone? I was told, no, no, for the interview. So I, I told them, what interview? I said, no, no, we were told to interview you. So I said, OK. I went to the boardroom, and I found all the directors, mm. over 10 of them. Mm. So they said uh, they're interviewing me for a position of uh, 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 managing director for the investment bank. Mm. So uh, I remember I told them uh, I do not want to be managing director. Mm. And they told me no, no, no. We've been told that you you'd be the best person for mm. this position. I told them no. Mm. I will actually not interview for this position. I told them I want a position of an associate, mm. yeah, which is much junior mm. to the managing mm. director. Mm. I told they said, but you have the skills mm. for the managing director. Mm. So I told them, then who will I learn from? Mm. If I'm the managing director, who am I learning from? Mm. Because I'm still quite young. Mm. I felt I, 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 can, I can perform it, mm. but then I will not grow mm. because I'll yeah. be the, uh, the, at the top. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I declined. Uh, oh, wow. that they said even the pay everything I said I don't want it mm. I said if you hire a managing director mm. then I can work under them mm. yeah, if, 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 uh, under, under for whatever the position yeah. once you create mm. yeah so that's why I ended up joining NIC Capital all uh, right uh, mm -hmm. because uh, of all the ones that had offered me I was, I was on my way to go to the airport mm. I got a call from uh, guy called Kairongure. So mm -hmm. he told me he's the MD of NIC Capital. They've just started, they've established as part of NIC Bank mm. uh, Group. Mm. And he wanted uh, to see me. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I told him I'm headed to the airport. He mm. said, no, no, no. Mm. Uh, on your way to the airport, mm. let's meet at Pan Africa just before 20 minutes. Mm. I said, OK. Mm. So we met, he discussed. He told me he wants to give me a, a job mm. there now mm. as a senior associate. Mm. Uh, I thought uh, about it. I had all these other offers, mm. but I, I liked him, mm. yeah, uh, and I uh, liked him as I saw him as uh, would be a good boss. Mm. So that's how I ended up uh, yeah. joining NIC. What the offer for equity was? You found, oh, I mean, what you wanted the equity offer to, to be? You found it exactly. Yes, yes. Here Actually, the others were giving me more money. Mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, I remember the INM uh, bank. And all, they're all giving me more money. Mm. But I, I felt that this one would be a better fit mm. uh, for me for that, growth. That, that's, that's a very interesting um, lesson right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at, at, that, at that age, what you're interested in the more mm. is, is growth. Yes. Yeah. Despite the fact that 
um, how we often perceive is that if someone is coming from abroad, then you have all the exposure. Yes. You can come and lead, but you felt you still needed to. Yes, I, I did not feel ready mm. to lead. Mm. I want. I wanted to play uh, mm. somewhere uh, mm. below. So you. So what happened to your masters at the time? So what happened is actually I jo I joined NIC, but. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, by around Ju uh, joined in January, mm -hmm. uh, I was starting my master's in September. Mm. So around July, I resigned mm -hmm. uh, to go start my master's. Mm. But uh, within uh, two weeks of my resigning, my boss, now Cairo, passed on. Oh. Uh, he had an accident on Mombasa Road. Mm. So uh, I was called uh, by our group managing director. Mm. And he told me now, if you leave, this organization that you guys have set up and uh, is doing very well mm. will also die uh, because mm. we had probably about 20 staff by then mm. um so he told me why don't you just defer mm. your masters, masters by a year mm. yeah at least to uh, yeah, establish to help us recruit mm. build it and whatever mm. uh and then after that then we can release you mm. so i thought about it uh and I decided to just uh, honor that mm. request mm. Yeah. and deferred mm. uh, my my masters, mm. and uh, so I, they made me so they made me a deputy general manager. Mm. Then from there, I really started putting in the efforts of uh, now because I had been here for about seven eight months mm. seven months. Mm. So now I understood the market more than I did before during the first interview yeah. because I had never been in Kenya. Mm. I never worked in Kenya. Mm. Um, so I worked as that uh, deputy general manager for another six months. Mm. By the time we were closing the year, mm. we had done so well. Mm. Uh, so the board said that they want to make me a general manager. Mm. Uh, rapid growth, a very rapid growth. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> even the salary they had more than doubled it. Mm. Uh, then at that point, I did full year again. Mm. Uh, by the end of the year, mm. uh, they they had they really uh, they they now had started the process of recruitment for mm. a managing director. Mm. I, so the deferred masters they didn't go. I just cancelled. Mm. Mm. Um, they started recruiting a managing director. Mm. But then I thought I was like, this this guy who is coming, uh, you now he's coming to enjoy what I've built mm. Mm. because now the team was about forty, mm. yeah, mm. Uh, and we were doing very well. Mm. Uh, the market we built a name. Actually, mm. we were now the mm. the, uh, the papers had the new kid on the block mm. and <laughs> all the things about me and what we are doing. Mm. So I told the group managing director and the mm. board. I told mm. them I don't. I think I can. Mm. handle this job mm. uh, they said okay uh, but we we'd want uh, some people from South Africa who mm. are coming to interview mm. so I said okay mm. uh, so when the interviews uh, were closed I was brought the the voucher for me to sign for their plane tickets mm. to come for the interviews mm. I said no let them pay for their tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so we will, I will not sign for them to come, so they didn't come for the interviews. <laughs> That's clever. <laughs> so, so, so I told them, but I've, uh, I've done everything. Mm. So, uh, mm. so that's how then they made me to be the managing director. <laughs> that was your interview. <laughs> <laughs> was, yeah. I said, I'm not paying for these tickets. Yeah. 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 Who are those guys? Like the group? No, different people coming for interviews. Because you see now South Africa or, is where the investment. Ah, uh, okay. The other candidates. candidates other candidates. Ah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. Why should they? Yes. <laughs> so just let them pay for it. They're yeah. coming to take what you have. Yes. All, 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 all of your sweat. Yes. All of my sweat. I was supposed to sign for the, for it to be processed. I yeah. said I won't sign. That's yeah. that's that's yeah. good. That's good. So you, you took. Now you become the general manager. Now you. I was general manager. Now I was made a managing director. I was mm. young. I was twenty seven. Wow. It's 27 or 28, yeah. As, as an MD? Yes. For a huge investment group? Yes, yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. What, what were the challenges for you at the time? The challenges were, of course, I was young mm. and the people I'm dealing with were all much older mm. uh, because as an investment banker, what you do is you advise companies. Mm. Uh, you in raising money, in restructuring, in, uh, in ma mergers and acquisitions. Mm in the stock exchange, mm. if it's IPOs, if it's uh, 
bonds, mm -hmm. uh, all those. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the people you meet, you are uh, their son. Mm. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. So mm. so they they are looking at what advice is this that you're giving? Mm. Yeah. That I haven't I've been there. Myself. Mm. I've been there. Mm. So so that was big mm. big challenge. Mm. Um, yeah, but then once you engage them, you explain to them, you mm. take them through, mm. uh, then they are happy. They start to they see start the value. Mm. Uh, that's why I did uh, the first, what you called uh, the equity linked note, mm -hmm. uh, which was the first one in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that about? For other river mining. Mm -hmm. uh, I raised for them 1.6 billion through a structured equity that, because the way they had borrowed a lot of debt, they could not raise uh, another debt instrument. Yeah. Mm. So I managed to structure something that was new in this market. Through NIC. Through NIC. Mm. I remember the Capital Markets Authority CEO, uh, Stella Kilonzo, mm. took, uh, took six months to approve. Mm. Eventually, when I came, I explained to her and she had called her entire team. Mm. She said uh, her concluding remarks was, nobody understands what you're talking about, but we'll just allow you to do it. So... <laughs> But you had done the calculation. Yes, I had done. All you the were betting on something that you yes. knew would work. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. So she said, "We'll give you the approval. Don't, mm. uh, don't fail us." Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I brought it to the market. And it was very successful. Mm. We were 156 percent of our subscribers. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm. So the company mm. uh, was very happy with us. Mm. Uh, from there, I did the. IPO for Britam. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we are wrestling mm. with all these other people who are much older mm. into the market. Mm. Uh, then from there, we did the biggest bond mm. uh, the market has ever done to date for housing finance for mm. 10 billion mm. back then. So essentially, we are doing all the transactions mm. uh, for the stock exchange. Mm. And also, we grew our securities uh, business for the mm. Uh, mm. the stock exchange. Now we are putting together uh, private equity mm. yeah, for investment in SMEs. So, yeah, so we built this business that was very small With, within yeah. that four years. And it became, became very, yeah. a huge portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, you've interacted at this stage. Um, before you were interacting, when, when you'd come from the U.S., you'd, you'd interact like with heads of banks. But now you are an authority yes. <laughs> yourself. So people are beginning now yes. to look for you more. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. How does um, your four year come to an end? So at that point... Uh, I was looking at essentially we had done everything. Mm. Uh, if it's the right issue people want to do, were well, the first people they were mm. coming to. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I went to the group managing director and I told him, uh, where and every every few months mm. they used to give me an extra check. Mm. They used to call Bond. it ex gratuity. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A few months, uh, end of the year they give me bonus. So yeah. my salary was very high yeah. and I was not even married. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I had very little. I had bought a house here in Lovington mm. because I was being paid quite a bit yeah. for a young person. Mm. So I went to the group managing director and I told him, uh, where do you see me in five years? Mm -hmm. He told me, no, no, we want you to build this business. And I told him, but how do I build it? It's already, mm -hmm. we're already you are, at the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, all the rankings, we are number one. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so he said, no, I, we, we wouldn't want you to leave mm. this position mm. because uh, you're doing so well there. Mm. So uh, I was like, I thought to myself, then I need to leave mm. yeah, because I don't see growth. They offered me more money. Mm. I said, I don't, it's not the money. Mm. Yeah, so I got another opportunity. I mm. moved back to London mm -hmm. uh, with a uh, uh, part of DFID. Okay. Uh, called Frontier Markets Fund Managers, mm. Garanko. Mm. Now Garanko. they've changed the name e to FCD or something? Yes, mm. yes. Yeah. Mm. Then it was DFID. DFID. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so in charge of uh, East and Central and Southern Africa ah. uh, on the uh, uh, under Frontier Markets Fund Managers that yeah. were cre created. Yeah. Essentially, we're doing mostly uh, impact investing mm -hmm. and uh, uh, providing guarantees for. Uh, uh, for infrastructure mm. uh, companies mm. across, across S the SA region, yes, mm. uh, across the East, Central mm. uh, and Southern Africa. Mm. So I was the one who was in charge. Yeah, so I I was there, uh, shuttling between here and London, 
but mostly in all these other countries. Yeah. In uh, was covering 18 countries mm. uh, for about a year and a half. Mm. Then I met uh, James, mm. uh, Dr. Mwangi, mm -hmm. uh, who were in, uh, in Sheraton in uh, Ethiopia. Mm. He saw me and he told me, you have to, you have to come work for me. Mm. Yeah. I told him, no, I'm happy where I am and mm. all that. He told mm. me, no, no, no. Mm. Yeah, I probably cannot afford to pay you what you're being paid mm. uh, there. Mm. But what I can give you is culture. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> told me, you see, mm. your company, you're about 20, 30 of you. Mm. I'll bring you to a company where you're 5,000. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I'll give you a very senior position that you'll be able to interact with these 5,000 and uh, appreciate the culture mm. of working in big groups. Mm. So that's... Uh, that was convincing. Uh, the, 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 uh, actually, was partly. Mm. Mm. So uh, I went on with my business. Then on mm. one day, mm. I, uh, James calls me. Mm. Uh, he tells me, where are you? I told him I'm at home. Mm. He tells me, okay. I talk to my driver and tell him where it is. I come. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I told him, no, 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 you don't need to come. Mm. You know, I was not used to have hosting billionaires <laughs> in my house. Uh, so he told me, okay, then can we meet? He said, mm. let's have lunch tomorrow. Mm. So I went, uh, mm. we met at uh, Crown Plaza. Mm -hmm. And when I arrive, I find all the board members of oh, Equity Group. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So I told, uh, so I asked uh, a gentleman called Jim Nambaru. Mm. It's mm. like, oh, you're having a board meeting. Mm. He told me, no, 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 we were just told to come and meet you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so uh, that I, James introduced the lunch and said, uh, this Nyakera, I've invited the board mm. because by the end of this lunch, mm. he has to have joined equity. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not an interview, it's an offer, it's yes. an offer uh, moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I was, remember I was doing my CPA exams mm. at 2 o'clock. Mm. So, so by 1.30, 1.40, we finished the lunch, I rushed to, the, to do my exams. Mm. Uh, and then he told the HR, if you do not, if you, Nyakera does not sign by end of the day, we'll fire you. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> so I'm finishing the exam. The HR director is calling me. Mm. Uh, he's telling me, your offer letter is ready. So I asked him, uh, on a Ruben, I don't, we have not agreed on anything. Mm. We've not agreed on the title, on the mm. salary, mm. on the start dates, mm. on the bonus, mm. my sign-on bonus. Mm. He told me, how much salary do you want? I told him what I thought I would want. Mm. Uh, then he said, okay, how much bonus? I told him, yeah. He said, okay, where can we get you to sign? <laughs> so, so that's how I joined <laughs> equity. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that by itself is, uh, it's, it sounds like a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so what role did you take? I took a managing director, mm. uh, equity investment bank within the equity group, mm. plus playing mm. uh, certain roles within the, mm. the group. Now, um, I, I, have, you, have you hit 30 at this time? Uh, that time is, uh, I was 30, 31. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yes. So I was 32. Very, very yeah, sorry, I was 32. Mm. It's 2014. Mm. Yeah, I was 32. Mm. Uh, yeah, I was mm. quite young, mm. still quite young. Mm. Yeah. So even as you enter to be this MD, every other, all your other counterparts, they are much all older. Much older. Yeah. Uh, by at least uh, years. 15, 20 years. Wow. Yeah. So your time at yeah. Equity? Yes. Mm. So Equity, we managed, actually, we really grew the business mm. um, uh, and did a lot. Because you see, now I was coming from a lot of the background of having done so much. Mm. So everybody in the market knew me. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, and now I had even another bigger balance sheet mm -hmm. uh, because now I was riding on the balance sheet of the bank. Oh, equity, yeah. uh, so what I was the difference, like percentage-wise or ratio-wise between equity and NIC at the time? Oh, equity was... Yeah, way bigger. Way equity bigger, was leading way bigger. Yeah, across. Yeah, yeah. Mm. equity was way bigger. Mm. even in size, in mm. terms of uh, capacity. Mm. Yeah, the team I was able to build, uh, we very quickly became number one in everything. Mm. Uh, built a wealth uh, mm. management mm. Uh, portfolio. portfolio. Mm. I believe, remember we moved from about 2 billion to about 14 billion in a 
a span of two months. That's a yeah? record. Because I organized for mm. us to go to all the branches, mm. uh, created products mm. for us. To, I'm the one who uh, did the acquisition of equity, the equity bank in uh, DRC, mm. uh, yes. a bank that was called Poor Credit Bank. Mm. Uh, I did the acquisition. Mm. So I was shuttling between DRC and Germany, the mm. shareholders were German. Mm. Uh, so we did, there is a lot that we did over mm. that period. Mm. Um, but then that's the, the, uh, the uh, during that time is uh, my friend, the governor of Nairobi mm. called me. The then governor of Nairobi? No, the current. The current governor yeah, of Nairobi. Sakaja. Sakaja. Yeah. So Sakaja calls me, mm. tells me, uh, he's somewhere with the president, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, mm. uh, and he's asking if anybody there knows me. Mm. Yeah. So Sakaja had said, yes, I know, mm. I know Nyakera. Mm. Uh, and so Sakaja told me the president wants your CV. So I told mm. him uh, for what mm. he said, he wants it for position of PS. Mm. So I told him, okay, just tell him I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> you had never thought? No, mm. I was never interested. Mm. So Sakaja told me, you're not serious. Mm. What are you saying? Mm. He said, no, no, I don't want it. Mm. Yeah. So he called me daily for a week, mm. yeah, asking for my CV mm. until he told me, okay, I'll tell James Mwangi to send it to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find so, a way to get yeah. it. Uh, so eventually I decided to send him mm. the CV. Uh, then he called me after a week, told mm. me, President like it, he wants to make your PS. Mm. So send your CV to Public Service Commission. Yeah. Mm. So that's how I was made PS. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and Which we, ministry were you, I, did you take on? Take, I took, uh, I was taken to the Ministry of Transport. Mm. Um, so before you even go there, that was the, were, were the interviews yes. done? Yes, now I was called mm. to go to the Public Service Commission. Yeah. Uh, for interviews. Mm, mm. Um, uh, is it one or a series? Just of? one. Mm. Just one interview. At this time, how are you thinking about you've been excelling in the private sector? It was mixed. Are you anxious? Uh, yeah, I was very anxious mm. because I was doing very well mm. in, in the in the bank. Mm. Uh, I felt there was a very good career and yeah. future. Yeah. Uh, my salary at the bank, uh, I was asking how much the PS paid was still 800,000. I was being paid more than three times mm. that at the bank. Mm. So I was like, why am I taking a pay cut? This is yeah. a huge step back. <laughs> this is a huge step back. Mm. I'm like, I've not been paid that mm. in so many years. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they convinced me, mm. they told me they'll find a way to compensate mm. uh, for that. Mm. But I felt that the, I, I was very anxious. Mm. I, uh, that time, my, my wife was very much against it mm. um, because we were like, oh, we just, uh, newly married, started a family, we mm. are doing well. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, so it, it was not an easy, mm. easy decision. decision. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I made it. Well, you made it still. Yeah. What, yeah. what made you make it? Service. Mm -hmm. I felt um, when, from, when we were in Starehe, mm -hmm. Griffin always used to tell us that the highest form of service is service to humanity. Mm. And that's why he was encouraging a lot of us to go into medicine. Mm. Uh, because yeah. he felt that you can serve mm. people that way. Mm. Uh, but he had said, if you ever get an opportunity to also serve the nation, mm. also you should not, uh, you should take it. Mm. So that, that was one thing that actually made me mm. take it, that just to, to be able to serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's deep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are your first few months in, in, uh, in public service? Now? No, difficult, mm. difficult, because uh, again, I was 33 years mm. old. Mm. Um, I remember one of the chairmen of the committees uh, came to see me and uh, he was telling me, you know, you are very young. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I told him, unfortunately, mm. the PS for transport is a young person, mm. <laughs> but he'll be old mm. in, in a number of years. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what uh, the, the system has been dealt with, yes. but let's deal with yeah. it. Yeah. So, so if you want to work mm. with work. the PS of transport right now, you'll have to work with a young man. Yeah. yeah. Mm. He's like, okay, okay, it's mm. okay, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean any harm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so you had to deal with a lot of that. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, and you also have a system that probably does not prop uh, young people. Mm. Uh, so, so people don't expect that you come there, you know everything. Mm. Yeah, mm. You see, you don't get any room of, 
or oh, here, yeah, mm. do this, mm. do this. The orientation yeah. isn't no. as what it as what is towards no. in, in in the yes. in the private sector. In the private sector, mm. you are oriented, you are mm. given. Mm. Uh, you, so here, you just thrown in the deep end mm. to swim. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we did, and we swam. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we did a lot. Uh, transport, we achieved a lot. Mm. Uh, what are your What do you look back at for those years that you're in the transport ministry and think, yeah. This is, I'm happy about this now. I would say that the things that I'm really happy about was uh, I did the SGR mm. uh, from Mombasa all the way to Nairobi and Navasha. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it, we did it in record time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it was very difficult and challenging because mm. it was, the, there, was a, there were a lot of moving parts mm. in getting the, 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 the timelines mm -hmm. to work. Mm. Uh, I, did the Isiolo airport. Mm. It had been stuck mm. forever. I came, I mm. put a budget on it. I mm. said that we have to finish it. Mm. And it was eventually launched mm. by the president. What does doing like those two look like in in, in practice? What what are you looking at? Because I'm sure it's, it, it's, a, it's a large project. There's large budgets. There's also large stakeholders. There's many things. What does it, what did your everyday look like? See, uh, it's understanding who the stakeholders are mm -hmm. uh, and engaging them. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why th those things were stuck is because nobody, the, the stakeholders were all pulling in different directions. Mm -hmm. uh, like you look at the Isiolo airport. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a big crack on the airport. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the airstrip. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so everyone was blaming it's this one, it's this mm -hmm. one, it's a mm -hmm. contractor, it's mm -hmm. the soil that mm -hmm. is cotton soil, it's mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I said, okay, but uh, we are we are there. Mm. How do we get it operational? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Of course, now we brought some technicians, mm. uh, and we are able to fix mm. whatever had been stuck for about four or five years. Mm. Yeah, the back would stop on you on some of these yes. big things. Yes, it stops with you, and to, uh, of course with the minister. Yeah, uh, but with you as the advisor to the minister and the accounting officer, mm. uh, there's a lot that then is expected mm. uh, from you to deliver on the leadership end. Mm. Um, if you look at uh, the SGR, for example, by the time we feel we were reaching the co completion, mm -hmm. I had brought together all the different stakeholders from the seafarer, from the, uh, the, the, the shipping lines mm. to the brokers, to mm. the, uh, all these other people, because we, we, ha we had to come up with the tariffs mm. that will allow them to ship everything, to transfer everything mm. through the SGR. Right. We had a target of 48% where we were saying if we can have the capacity of SGR uh, at 48%, mm. that is, uh, we, we, we carry the car, mm. uh, utilization, mm. then we'll break even. Uh, oh, and so that's what informed the percentage. Yes, mm. percentage. Mm -hmm. um, but when I left, I think all that uh, mm. fell through, the stakeholders are not engaged. Yeah. Currently, we are doing around 7% mm. uh, utilization. That's why the Treasury mm. has to fund and pay mm. for the mm. SGR loans, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which was not the plan. Yeah. Which had, uh, at that time, were the relationships that you had built across the private sector, both here in Kenya and internationally, were they coming to play? They were in, 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 in one way or another, because mm -hmm. like, for example, the, uh, a lot of, uh, when I was PS for planning, mm. uh, we had a project that had uh, stalled the Lex Basin Development mm. Authority, mm. Uh, the mall that is in Kisumu. Mm. And uh, I had to engage mm. a cooperative bank, which mm. is the one that had a loan. Mm. And so, so all those relationships that mm. I had mm. uh, from before, mm. we were able to utilize them mm. in one way or another. Mm. You mentioned PS planning, uh, but then previously it was transport. Yes. How did that transition happen? So you see, PS is usually serve the, uh, the behest of the president. Mm. Uh, uh, so, so every so often the president will do reshuffles mm. and so you move from one mm. department to another mm. so i was moved from transport and taken to planning mm. but at planning you're i mean now you already understand the system yes. so I, I, i'm assuming it was a lot easier for you to find your oh, way yeah, through. yeah 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 much easier mm. much easier because i had been there done that yeah i had the relationships understood a lot on the state craft and how to mm. to to be able to uh, work under uh, the system, mm. so it was much easier. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Serving in both 
ministries between around 2014, you say? Yeah, 2015 to 2018. That's, that's a sizable period yes. and a lot was happening. What, what do you remember was happening in the, in the, in the macro space? Uh, in, within Kenya, ah, the, you know, 2017 we had the elections, Definitely. the general elections. So, mm. so it was a re-election of the president, mm. uh, and that's when I was thrown into the murky world of campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, we started uh, as PSs. All of us were given different areas to 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 operate in. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I was given Moranga, mm. and I was also doing uh, part of the the the, the Turkana, mm. West Pokot, uh, Kwale. Mm. Uh, Kilifi. Mm. Um, so, so they had to cross the country. Had to cross, coast, coast, coast yeah. to coast. Yeah, mm. yeah. You had to mm. cross, cross the country. Mm. If it's food distributions, mm. if it is engaging the business community, mm. if it is uh, voter registration, mm. all those things. Mm. Uh, on top of your regular. On top of your regular uh, <laughs> job. Yeah. So we were never in. Uh, you are in Nairobi Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. That's the Friday to Sunday. Yeah. You are out Outside. campaigning. And yeah. it's it's different places at it's different, different times. It's different places. You, if you're going to Turkana, you're here. You've hired uh, chopper. Mm. You're off to Turkana. Mm. You're off to Pokot on the same day. Yeah, yeah. But you're doing good. So you call it the murky world of campaigning. Yes. But the things that you are doing are, are good. Like you're distributing food. Yes. You're, yes. Yes. Where is the murkiness? <laughs> no. For, for 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 someone our audience who. They, that word is used often, yes. and it is related to just how what the branding that politics is put like it's a dirty game. Yet, what the things you're mentioning sound like very good things to do. You see, the, uh, as when there is politics, mm. anything good you do is still perceived to be political. Uh, political. Mm. Yeah. So even if you call uh, someone and you give them food. Mm. They're like, will you be here next year? Yeah. Give me food. Yeah. yeah. Or you want And of course boat. you won't. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, you know. And mm. you know that as soon as you yeah. leave, mm. someone else will also come. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> you, you, it has to be very calculated on yeah. how you do it yeah. and, all, and all that. Had you ever uh, imagined, imagined yourself uh, growing up uh, wanting to be a doctor and then, you know, studying engineering and then getting into banking? Had you ever imagined yourself that you would be? Not just in the public sector, in politics. Yes, yes, yes. You had ever imagined? I had this? planned. Actually, mm. I had planned. I remember when we were talking with my wife, we had said, I had told her I'd want to run mm. uh, for office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When so did the last dream come to you for that? Uh, uh, much earlier, because mm. you see, I was in student leadership mm. in university. I was uh, student mm. leadership. Mm. Uh, coming mm. now out of it, I was always. Mm. in those positions. So right. I was always interested mm. Mm. Uh, in, in, in running for office. What was her take when, when you would mention that? Uh, she said as long as the kids then will be big. Yeah. Uh, uh, so so not when they it are wasn't a deal breaker. Glass. <laughs> no, yeah. They, yeah, no, I told her it's something that I'd want to do. Mm. So mm. you can't mm. you can't break someone's dreams, dreams and you've just met them. Yes, true, <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah. true. Yeah. I, 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 um, so she's been with you and seen you through yes. through it all. Yeah. Um, how does we are we aren't even at the you getting into further? But how like, like the move when you started doing those kinds of things now getting into um, 2017? How was she and the family responding to to all of that? It's never uh, it's never easy mm. uh, because you know what politics does it removes you mm. uh, from from the setting yeah. in, a, in a big way because if you're campaigning. Yeah. You're there week after week, uh, week after week, mm. day after day. All it's weekends not, are never gone. Stop. Yeah, mm. weekends are gone. Mm. Church, you are in the villages mm. and whatever else. Mm. So it's it, it's always it's always a very tough mm. uh, time for families, mm. especially for young families. Mm. So it's just having to get used to it mm. uh, with time. Never, not accepting it, mm. uh, mm. The, 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 just saying okay. It will come to an end. Yeah, it will pay off in a different way. It will pay off in a different way. Off in a different way. Mm, mm. Uh, but I think the, the, it's, it's, it's always challenging. Mm, I know it's mm, always challenging. Mm. Yeah. So we are in 2018 now. Yeah. Uh, or rather, first, yeah. the politics, the campaign season ends, and um, you continue still as a PS uh, at that period. How does, how does your life and career continue from there? We continued uh, until. Uh, Okay, with these positions also, there's always a lot of politics. Mm. Um, and uh, 
uh, in particular by the time by the time you finish uh, the campaigns mm. the people who did the campaigns are not the ones mm. who are who are calling the shots mm. yeah uh, so this is the politics of this people some people in Moranga is uh, saying oh we we want uh, someone else to mm. present us mm. we have this other older person this mm. one is young mm. this, we had all those huh? mm. uh, so so that's why in my I did not uh, get uh, reappointed mm -hmm. yeah but I was also not dropped we mm. were we I just stayed there mm. as a PS without mm. portfolio <laughs> For almost eight months, mm. yeah, mm. just being told that no, no, you'll be. Uh, mm. It's coming. Just wait. Just mm. wait a bit. Mm. Uh, no, mm. yeah. Mm. Uh, Meanwhile, at that time, what are you using the eight months to do? Just my own mm. uh, stuff, mm. my own business, because you're still PS. Mm. Uh, yeah. you still have all the government facility. Mm. Only that the office I, I had we were two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, there was the other PS. The other PS. Yeah. So you go, and then you're like, okay, mm. uh, it's really. Mm. nothing for mm. me here mm. come back to my private office yeah um, wait i'm called mm. for meetings you go and mm. everything but mm. uh, salary comes mm. yeah mm. but there's really no function yeah yeah your the fact that you had gone to back to like where you had been born in muranga during the 2017 period were you then also establishing yourself yes at the time yes. in 2017 yes. Yes. and how was that no, it was, it was good at least to understand the terrain. Mm -hmm. I'd never really been in Moranga in that way, mm. going around the entire county, mm. uh, appreciating and understanding it, mm. understanding the politics mm -hmm. uh, of it and uh, the how diverse mm. uh, it is, and also just to, uh, to appreciate the levels of uh, poverty and suffering mm. yeah, uh, that were there. There's a yeah. large semi-arid area yes in, in, in what is typically supposed to be like a very fertile yeah uh, county if you say moranga people mm. won't believe that you have your idanga mm. yeah, exactly. yeah um uh, makuma whatever maragua ridge and all these mm. other places the communities mm. uh, where people actually even uh, is, is classified mm. uh, uh, by cra mm. uh, under the the, the hardship mm. uh, awards. Mm. Yeah. So after these eight months, what happens? After the eight months, now we we officially left mm -hmm. uh, service, mm. and then from there I went on to do my own personal business. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to hear more about the Nyakera Foundation, as well as now your return to uh, vie for office. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, if you may. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, because of the the understanding the uh, the ground and all the, the challenges mm -hmm. and all that, that's when I started the Nyakera Foundation, mm -hmm. Hulungu Nyakera Foundation. Mm. Uh, actually, I started it and registered it in 2018 mm -hmm. after I finished the mm. the elections mm. in February of 2018. Mm. Uh, so we started uh, by first doing the uh, the scholarships mm -hmm. uh, to the poor and deserving. Mm. Uh, then uh, the for high school. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we went on to do now the, the mentorships mm. uh, the, the, in the schools. Mm. Uh, then we launched, um, looked at the uh, sports, uh, realized that Muranga, the uh, sports was not being nurtured. Mm. Uh, we, on the Muranga side, the county, the FKF mm. uh, Football League, had five teams. Mm. If you go to the Kiambu side, mm. they had 33 teams. Mm. So, and there was just a, a, a board. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I told them, surely, mm. I, I think we need to find mm. a way to up. Mm. So I, uh, the foundation mm. uh, uh, got into a, an MOU mm. with FKF, the mm -hmm. Football, Football Kenya mm. Fon, uh, Federation. Mm. Uh, and we now uh, equipped the teams, mm. we paid for their fees, mm. we got them uniforms. Mm. Uh, footballs, mm. the kids, and everything, mm. and we started off with uh, some twenty teams, mm. uh, sixteen in the county mm. uh, league and four in the regional league. Mm. By the next year, when we finished, uh, we now at twenty four teams. Mm. Yeah, mm, that's, uh, that's current, a good growth. Yeah. A very good growth. Mm. Uh, currently, we have almost thirty teams. Oh, nice! Yeah. It's almost catching up with what there was in Kiambu. What was in Kiambu, mm. and the talent is there. Mm. What lacked was just uh, the someone or 
the, the an institutional framework that then uplifts mm. uh, and supports that talent. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Besides FKF, the, why, like how are you interacting now with other uh, stakeholders that would play uh, a role, not just also in, in, in sports, but in many other of the things that you would be doing with Nyakera Foundation? Uh, for, for, for us, we interacted, you see, like when it comes to uh, bursaries, mm. uh, the scholarships, we worked with the churches, mm. with the chiefs, the administration. Actually, all the people were collecting the, their checks, they were collecting them from the uh, DCC, mm. uh, the, the district, uh, the, the, the DCC's office mm. or the chief. Mm. Um, I, don't, I, I didn't even engage with them. <laughs> I didn't even know this parent or that or mm. this. Mm. Because that that's where uh, we were using them to tell, to tell us who mm. the needy mm. uh, people were. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, we uh, essentially we mapped out within the county mm -hmm. things that we can do. Mm. Uh, we looked at that's also where we looked at agriculture mm. Mm -hmm. and so that uh, a majority of the Moranga population is uh, are farmers mm. and Moranga itself is an agrarian county mm. uh, and uh, I listened to them and their woes, mm -hmm. give me their woes as farmers, mm. in particular on the tea and coffee. Mm. Um, and that's where we started fighting for change mm. uh, in the sector mm -hmm. to empower the farmer, mm. to get the farmer to be paid more. Mm. Yeah. Uh, when we started the fights for tea reforms, mm. everybody thought it is it can't be done. Mm. I think the last time there were such a reforms mm. was in 1984. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So everyone will say, we've been trying, we've tried. Mm. These people who are there have been mm. there for 20, 30 mm. years. Mm. We can never kick them out. I mm. told them, I think the time has come mm. yeah, for us to have this conversation and mm. for us to have this change. Mm. Um, it was dangerous because everyone thought that I'll lose my life <laughs> uh, for it. Or serious yeah. cartels yeah. Uh, in it. Mm. But I went in mm. and uh, managed all to get all the way to the president mm. uh, who having worked with me, mm. uh, supported mm. me fully on this course. Mm. Yeah, so I really want to, uh, I would have to say that the president, former president who Kenyatta, mm. is the one who made it possible mm. for those reforms mm. to happen. Mm. Uh, the impact of which is <coughs> far reaching. Far reaching, mm. the farmers are getting paid more. Mm. They were paid their bonuses mm. yesterday, something that used to be paid in April, May. Mm. Now in January, they've already been paid. Mm. So for the that, year that was? For the year that was, mm. I managed uh, through those reforms to take uh, the bills to parliament mm. uh, for them to change, mm. uh, and they did. Mm. Uh, we took on on the coffee side mm -hmm. as well. As well, yeah. Uh, did the bills? Mm. Uh, we di we weren't as successful because mm. uh, the Senate and. Uh, National Assembly had a tag, mm. uh, so we had two bills mm. that were not harmonized mm -hmm. on, on the two, and mm. uh, the current administration, we've talked and uh, requested that they try harmonize uh, those uh, two bills so mm. that we can be able to pass mm. as one bill for mm. the coffee farmers. Mm. If we can empower um, the farmer, yeah, 67% uh, of Kenyans are employed mm. or get a living, make a living. Through, uh, through agriculture, mm. either directly or indirectly mm. through the different linkages mm. that bring back uh, us back to agriculture. Mm. Um, the 25% of our forex mm. is uh, agri. agri, actually mm. tea. Mm. Tea mm. alone is tea. 25% mm. uh, of the forex. Mm. Uh, our GDP, mm. yeah. 24% mm. of the GDP mm. uh, directly mm. uh, in, in agriculture. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If you look at our food basket, mm. it's three trillion a year. Mm. Yeah. Our imports are crazy. About we import about sixty five billion in a, uh, about ninety billion last year mm. uh, was in uh, this uh, edible oils. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Which can be done here. Yeah. yeah. So we imported about forty billion on on, on uh, this uh, rice. Mm. Yeah. We import so much on sugar. Mm. On this. So things that Yet we can we have the role we have the capacity mm. yeah mm. so if we can find a way to to empower the farmer mm. but also mm -hmm. noting that 
farming is not an extracurricular activity. No, it is core. It's a business. Mm. Yeah. Mm. A farmer will utilize their farm mm. to do farming because it mm. will make them money. Mm. So when it does not make them money, mm. the farmer walks away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So so I think that we just need to appreciate the role mm. the farmers play mm. and ensure that just like the other countries like the US and the other places, we empower our farmers. Yeah and we put money in their pockets. Mm. And that is one of the critical things, key things that we actually advocated and pushed through our, our foundation. Mm. Yes. Mm. You would do this through the foundation, you would lobby for reforms in, in agri, in the, not just in tea and coffee, but in, in agri. And, and you've mentioned a couple of the challenges that you'd face. Um, was it also through that, that then you beca became associated with the farmers party yes yeah. yes so from there we joined i joined farmers party mm -hmm. where i'm currently the party leader and the chair mm. uh and uh we as of course as the name mm, uh, suggests, uh, suggests yeah. uh, we, we focus on farmers mm. and uh the so we were able to uh to also advocate for these reforms under farmers party mm. uh was also uh also the chair uh for the uh kenya Tea sector lobby, mm. uh, which again uh, is a lobby group that was uh, pushing for the reforms on this agenda. Mm. Um, so yeah, so yeah, we advocated. Mm. It was uh, across uh, mm. different mm. platforms. Mm. Uh, the media, mm. the media really helped mm -hmm. uh, get us through mm. uh, through to the end. Mm. Uh, yeah, and just getting the different stakeholders because mm. everybody ac agreed that something needs to be done. Mm. It's just that there was never anyone. To, to do it. take on yeah. the responsibility yes. and continue. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you. On behalf of farmers, we all are products of farmers and, and farming. So yeah. thank you for um, those reforms and put, continuing to push for them even now. So uh, at this stage, then I would like us to enter the the part that you be, you choose now to n not only are you party leader but also the flag bearer, and and now you are beginning to campaign. What drove yes. you to, 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 to do so? I, 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 you see, for, for me, I was looking at uh, the, the role that I've been able to play. Mm -hmm. uh, and I felt that if I'm at an executive position, mm. I'll be able to even impact mm. more because mm -hmm. then I'll have a platform and the authority yeah. uh, to be able to deliver mm. on that change. Mm. Uh, agriculture is devolved. Mm -hmm. And I felt that the Council of Governors uh, need a, a voice within for someone who can champion mm. for the uh, changes mm. in agriculture. Mm. And that's why I ran for position of governor. Mm. Uh, and the key agenda being, uh, look of course broadly, mm. because it's not just the farming, mm. but I felt if we put money in farmer's pockets, and mm. not just farmers from Moranga, mm. then we'll be able to, all these other issues, by the way, we, we sort them. Yeah. If it's issues of healthcare, mm. If someone can earn money, they'll mm. be able to pay their 500 for an HIF. Yeah. They won't come to us. Mm. They'll be able to take their kids to school. Mm. They'll be able to buy uniform mm. for their kids and books. Mm. Yeah, They'll be able to eat healthy. Mm. Yeah, So we'll have sorted them in, so, in all these ways. So mm. that's why my key calling and the agenda was, let's put money in farmers' okay. pockets. Yeah. 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 And, and um, logically and also practically, it does make sense. Yes. The snowballing effect is yes. there, as you, uh, as you spoken. It's empowerment on resources, but also it's empowerment to, to the person. How was the journey of running for office? I, I think uh, for, for me, I found uh, it was it, it was fulfilling. Mm. Uh, one is because the things I was the the platform that I used, mm. which was the farmers, mm -hmm. uh, I felt I delivered for mm. them. Mm. Yeah, and I delivered because I was also pushing for mm. my own mm. uh, agenda mm -hmm. of, of being elected. Mm. Um, that they didn't elect me mm. <laughs> as uh, as governor, mm. I think that does not change anything mm. uh, because there's always a next time. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of things I learned. Mm. I think our key thing was on the political alignments and mm. the party mm. uh, because while Farmers Party was part of the Kenya Kwanzaa, mm. I think the, the president and his troops mm. were pushing for UDA, mm. yeah, mm. Uh, even if we're together. Mm. Uh, and the masses had been, mm. there was a big wave mm. uh, of just going for mm. uh, the UDA candidates. Mm. 
Um, and they, they elected the UDA candidates mm. Uh, mm. across the board. Mm. Yeah. yeah, all of, uh, all, all of Muranga. All of Muranga. Essentially, I think yeah. only two MCAs mm. were not mm. uh, UDA. Mm. Uh, so it's uh, it's unlikely then I would have been able to go mm. against that uh, mm. wave mm. Uh, and mm. we've accepted mm. that. Mm. Uh, come 2027, mm. we'll make our decisions of, on what we want uh, politically, mm. uh, but more so because of the Farmers Party. I'd want Farmers Party to grow. I'd mm. want us to have more candidates. Mm. I'd want us to uh, win more positions mm. uh, so that we can be able then uh, to, to steer the farmers' agenda mm. uh, even in the next mm. administration. We might not be able to do much in the current administration and we've accepted that mm. yeah mm. but in the next one mm. we'll plan better mm. yeah. um in, in 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 i understand that we are strained on time but i have just two final questions one is um what's the biggest lesson that you've picked um you you've recently turned 40. yes <laughs> yes if you look back at your life which you have mentioned to us uh you've walked us through what, what's the one, two big lessons that you pick uh, from, from just your life, how it's flowed out and, um, and where it is right now? I think there are two things that are important in life. One mm -hmm. is luck, the other one is consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to be lucky mm -hmm. <laughs> because some things just happen. Yeah. You don't even know how it happens. Mm -hmm. I cannot say attribute my successes to mm -hmm. myself a hundred percent. There's mm -hmm. a a good 30 40 percent that mm. is lucky mm. uh, of course luck meets the, when luck meets uh, the prepared then mm. an opportunity happens True. so one True. still has to be prepared mm. uh, for that to happen mm. two is consistency mm. um, you see the, once you can be doing so many things mm. uh, but if you do not focus on one thing mm. in particular mm. then you'll not go far mm. yeah and that's how we, su we succeeded mm. on the T reforms mm. These guys who are seeing me on TV, on Kameme, on mm. Inoro, on Standard, on mm. The Nation, mm. <laughs> they're mm. like, what's wrong with this yeah. guy? Yeah. Yeah. Even at some point, uh, the chairman asked me, Kwani, how many tea bushes do you have <laughs> that you're, you're all over fighting yeah. for this thing? Yeah. I said, all the tea in the yeah. country, you yeah. know how much it is? Yeah. See, that's mine. Multiple yeah. times, <laughs> yes. multiple channels. Yes, multiple channels, yeah. all over, you don't tire. Mm. Mm. Uh, and in doing all that, mm. Uh, you should always go in knowing that you can win or lose. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, if you win, mm. then you deliver on what mm. you planned. If you lose, mm. there's always the next thing. Mm. Yeah. And losing an election is not losing. Uh, uh, there's something you've said very important that you are happy that you delivered on the promise yes. um, to 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 the constituents and the farmers. So that's a win by itself. Yes. So um, as you explain loss, the loss of an election, how is processing that? Uh, because of the mentality you go in with. Mm. Uh, if you go in uh, imagining that you have to win, then mm. it becomes very hard to process. Mm. But if you go in knowing that there's still a possibility mm. that you won't make it, mm. then you very quickly just move mm. on with your life. Mm. Yeah. Whichever election <coughs> outcome comes, yes. you're yes. able to adjust adjust yourself. What are your next, uh, what, Nyakera moving on from here, what yeah. what are you thinking, what you may disclose or not, but yeah. I know you're, you're handling quite a bit of your businesses. Yeah. Are they in real estate? Are they in, um, um, like what, what, what are you looking at ahead, not just even in 2027, 20, but just ahead for, uh, for the next 40 years for you? Yeah. I think for, for me, I want to focus on my businesses mm -hmm. uh, for now, mm. uh, for the next uh, few years mm -hmm. uh, before we, and also on uh, building Farmers Party. Mm. Um, the, the, then I also want to focus on myself. Mm. Uh, I think this uh, stuff I didn't do uh, mm. during that period, the, my, uh, the masters I didn't yeah. go for. The uh, deferred on, masters. The deferred <laughs> masters, mm. I need to pursue that mm. this year. Mm. Uh, and uh, a few other things that I, uh, I'm looking at. Mm. The time mm. didn't spend with family. Mm. I want to spend that. Your uh, children are now grown? They're grown. Mm. They're, they're, they're big. Mm. They're much bigger now. Mm. Uh, and uh, also now looking at uh, how, the, what best way to serve. Mm. Because we started mm. uh, this journey mm. 
come 2027, mm. we'll decide on mm. what uh, uh, to pol pol political mm. uh, position to, mm. to uh, how to position mm. ourselves politically. Mm. Mm. And because we still want to serve. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so as we as we finish and we address our audience, <laughs> um, there's someone who is probably much younger. Uh, you, you have led young. You have worn young. You have been in places where a lot of young people um, would not find themselves even today, regardless of the fact that you know the age gap is still uh, closing out much significantly. Um, there is what you've said about consistency and luck, but what is it that you would advise? Uh, you tell back the young Nyakera <laughs> that is about to break from go back. Um, go back to before even returning to Nyahuru, the young Nyakera in Starehe yeah. before high school, what yeah. would you tell him? I think the the, the lesson that I would uh, teach them is on patience. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that you might want things uh, but when they don't mm. you don't get them mm. all the time. Mm. Then you just be patient. Mm. Yeah, they'll mm. come. Mm. They'll yeah. come. Yeah. come and it has manifested for yes. You. yes yes all right thank you very much yeah. we appreciate your time and uh i don't know if there's anything you'd like to close with i'll give you the the the, the, the final opportunity to do so but on behalf of development dynamics we are super grateful that you shared your life your moments your um and how it has how you have found meaning in all in in it all and um and connected quite a number of development dots for us I uh, give you now the opportunity to close. No, thank you. Thank you very much even for the time and the opportunity to engage uh, on this and share my story. Uh, I think for me, the, the one thing that I think about is the young people. Uh, and I think about them a lot because I put myself in the shoes of some people I meet, young people I meet in the villages. And if I did not get the opportunity I got, I be, imagine I'd also be there mm. uh, with them. So sometimes we, th we criticize them too much mm. yeah, and expect too much from them. Mm. We need to mentor them. Mm. Yeah, we need to mentor the young people. Mm. We need to create opportunities, genuinely create opportunities for them both to learn mm. but also to grow. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and there is no better way of doing it than um, uh, building uh, focusing on the Tibets, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and I do hope that the current administration mm -hmm. will actually really focus on the Tibets. Mm -hmm. uh, the now with our education system, the mentorship that I was talking about, what Griffin was doing, mm -hmm. uh, the career talks, mm -hmm. we need to do it to them in their form three, their form fours. Let them understand both the academia side, but then let them also learn about life, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, about the future and that everything would happen for them in the first two, three years or mm -hmm. five years or ten years mm -hmm. after finishing school. Mm -hmm. But if they do not create a foundation for what they want to happen in those ten years, then they will always remain there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when people become successful, when they see someone who's not, they blame that person. Mm -hmm. They do not blame the environment. Mm -hmm. I think we need to change that mm -hmm. so that we never imagine that these guys are poor because they are lazy. Mm. They are poor because they have no opportunities okay. and they have not been given that opportunity mm. to actually build themselves. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a huge call to action for, for the ones who have been lucky to, mm. to get ahead and um, to, to help build you know, to help others yes. stand on our shoulders yeah. and, and keep, yeah. keep yeah. going and see further and do more. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank Asante you. Asante. Yeah. Asante.